Civil Defense Commission starts to distribute relief supplies to flood affected residents as warnings of more intense rainfall surface. The People's Progressive Party said it's a peaceful protest outside of the U.S. Embassy in solidarity with the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. A knife wheeling bandits carry out yet another carjacking and robbery, but this time right on Cherry Street. And of course, we'll bring you the latest sporting action. The Diamond, Mineral Water, and NCN Sport News. Hello, good evening. I am Janelle Prasad. And I'm Paul Moore. With this edition of the 6 o'clock news for today, Friday, January 9, 2009. Here's what's happening. Thanks, Janelle. The Civil Defense Commission is to start distributing relief to flood affected residents as warnings of more intense rainfall surface. This was revealed by Cabinet Secretary Dr. Roger Luncheon, who also explained that efforts are ongoing to place residents in the Mahaika, Maikoni, and Abari Creeks into temporary shelters. Edward Lane reports. This is weekly post-cabinet media briefing today has said the Civil Defense Commission has been monitoring the flood situation countrywide, which will now expand its response based on the situation in the Mahaika, Maikoni, and Abari Creeks. And the cabinet secretary noted that some residents in these creeks will be relocated while focus is placed on food distribution. Civil Defense Commission was always involved in monitoring and the assessment. They quickly moved into supporting humanitarian responses, and the humanitarian responses now has moved up than those distribution of food. There is no doubt that in some communities, particularly the the likelihood of flooding for an extended period is great. And the school children, the elderly, they very well benefit from being accommodated at a state expense on the less hazardous conditions. So preparation for shelter management is being ramped up. Dr. Lanson says a temporary shelters are necessary since the water is being released from the conservancy to avoid a catastrophe on the entire East Demerara, as predicted that the rains will last until April. When asked about funding for the CDC program, Dr. Lanson says this has already been addressed. The Civil Defense Commission will be provided with all of the assets, all of the tools, all of the funds that it needs to implement a government program. Schools in the affected areas will be utilized as the temporary shelters. Dr. Lanja noted that already approval has been given for the Army to dispatch more soldiers to work with the CDC. He, who is also the National Disaster Coordinator, says significant D&I works are ongoing to address the many factors, both natural and man-made, that are responsible for flooding in some areas. He notes that the silting of canals, deployment of more mechanical drainage pumps, both mobile and stationary and utilizing gravity drainage, with the tide at maximum are among the efforts. Heavy rains since December last battered Diana, leaving many coastal communities inundated with the Mahaika Maikoni and Abari Creek's hardest hit. Edward Lane, the 6 o'clock news. The People's Progressive Party has condemned the Israeli government for the massacre directed at Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Its members braved the rains this morning in a peaceful protest outside of the U.S. Embassy in Georgetown, where I spoke with the leader, Donald Zomitar. We are moved by the terrible suffering that is taking place right now in Gaza. We are the most sophisticated type of weapons have been used against a people that is practically unarmed. The Palestinian people are, are practically unarmed when you compare comparing that with, um, with what is taking, with, with the type of weapon that Israel has. And this is a, a great humanitarian disaster that is taking place. A comment Mr. Ramata made during a peaceful protest outside of the U.S. Embassy staged by his party in solidarity with the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. 
and despite the weather, party members walked in front of the Duke Street Kingston building with placards displaying their sentiments, which were most centered on the silence of the world economic giant. The party's belief that the attacks could not have been possible without the economic and military support of the United States government was delivered by its leader. The, the weapons that are being used, the planes that are being used, are all being supplied by the United States. The economy of Israel is being propped up by huge amounts of grants and loan grants given by the United States to Israel. And that is, that is the real reason that Israel is so strong because of the amount of support that they are getting. So we think that the U.S. should be conscious of this humanitarian disaster and use their influence to stop the killing that is taking place. Mr. Ramatar says the U.S. support of Israel has continued despite that country's violations of numerous United Nations resolutions. The European Union and Russia have also been urged to play their part in getting Israel to stop and to encourage a political solution to the age-old problem. But even the United Nations' demand for an immediate end to the two weeks of conflict runs unheeded, as Israel says it will keep up its offensive in the Gaza Strip. Prime Minister Elon Musk said the latest firing of rockets into Israel showed the resolution was unworkable. Hamas has also dismissed the UN's call. The number of Palestinians killed in the Israeli air raid on Gaza Strip, concluding its second week today, has climbed to 779, while only 13 Israelis have reportedly died. Knife-wheeling bandits have staged a non-car jacking and robbery. This time, Stokely Cosbert was hired by three men on Sheriff Street to go town to town, but before he could reach, they held him up, took away $15,000 and his car. The robbery thefts have occurred about 22 hours last night. Cabinet Secretary Dr. Roger Luncheon says PNCR leader Robert Corbyn's comments on the appointment of Henry Green as police commissioner are unimportant. Corbyn at a media conference earlier this week said Green's appointment by President Barajagio was unconstitutional. Here again is everything. Mr. Corbyn at the PNCR's press briefing on Thursday said the President's move to appoint Green without consulting with him as the opposition leader was unconstitutional. He described the case as a breach of the Constitution by the President for which he should be held accountable by the people of Guyana. Corbyn also questioned the appointment of Steve Mirai as assistant commissioner. But Dr. Lunton, in response to questions by the media on the issue, said these utterances may be an attempt to distract the public from the successes of the police. If they feel, and Mr. Corbyn feels, that indeed there is formidable evidence that the constitutional, in one way or the other, ignored compromise in the whole process of appointing the commissioner, then as a trial lawyer, I suppose he knows that in addition to making noises in the press, the definitive intervention is supposed to have a ruling on the matter. Dr. Lunton says Corbyn's move to question the appointments by the Police Service Commission seem to be unadvised and inconsistent with the real security issues confronting the nation and the efforts of the Green-led police force. It's not really that the Commission is appointed according to the Constitution. I think he himself recognizes it's the work of the police force. He himself recognizes is the way in which we can mobilize public sentiment in support of the police force. President Barrett Jagger confirmed the Green in the position on December 31 last after he acted for two years. The President in the past said that Green was his candidate and several attempts to get the opposition leader's approval for his appointment failed. Edward Lane, the 6 o'clock news.